I worked hard to get my degree, but I was working even harder to pay off my student loans. Then I found Credible.com. Credible made it fast and easy to compare pre-qualified refinancing rates from top lenders, so it would be faster and easier to pay off my private student loans. I'm saving hundreds of dollars monthly, and checking rates on Credible was free. If you want to lower your private student loan payments, get help from Credible.com. Message from Credible Operations, Inc., read by an actor. Pre-qualified rates are not an offer of credit. Terms apply. Visit Credible.com for details. Don't wait. Refinance your student loans today at Credible.com. Credible.com. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Jim Ryan. And together we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. But first, we want to give a special thanks to our sponsor, Mid-Columbia Medical Center which provides specialty care for athletic injuries in Portland and beyond. Thanks so much for supporting the show. And today we are headed to a bunch of beaches that we are going to explore on the southern Oregon coast. And Jamie, word on the street is that you actually spent a lot, emphasis <laughs> on lot of time, down on southern Oregon coast beaches uh, just here recently. Yeah, word on the uh, Instagram profile. <laughs> yes, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is uh, sort of the culmination of this project I have been spending, I guess, the last four years yeah. on of trying to go out and document um, every sort of major publicly accessible beach on the Oregon coast. So I did a, a story on the North Coast and then a story on the Central Coast. And this year I am doing the final piece, which is a story on all the beaches on the southern Oregon coast. So I went out there and spent a week going to all the beaches I had not been to previously. Um, and we're talking, we're talking about beaches. We're talking about, you know, sandy beaches that have, um, reasonable public access. Yeah. So like no little neighborhood beaches, places where you can find somewhere to park, established access points, nothing you've got to like climb down a rope to get to, um, places you can go and actually enjoy yourself. Yep. This is not like the, Locals only know about it, bushwhack through the woods, roll down a hill, do six jumping jacks, turn around three <laughs> times, and you found it, right? Uh, it, this is like an established place that you could find on a map or you could find in a posting somewhere about beaches along the coast. Yeah. And I mean, some of these certainly are like under the radar spots. For right? sure. You know, I, I went to some places that were clearly like... Like the secret surf spot, you know, mm -hmm. there are a bunch of surfers out there and you got to know, like, you know, here's this pull off on the side of the highway and the trail that goes under the bridge. Um, but, you know, there's a sign there that says this is the beach. Here yeah. you go. Um, so that's kind of places we're looking at. I like that, Jamie. Uh, and and we'll, we'll we'll say eventually the culmination of this project. This is the culminating trip, perhaps. But the eventual story to come out of this. Are, am I mistaken in saying that you are trying to name the best beach on the Oregon coast? <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to do it. I don't think I could, I could even yeah, okay. begin to do that. Okay. I'm I could, over I could talk here. about like, like some personal favorites and, yeah. you know, because that's the thing you go to so many beaches that there are about 48 beaches in the South coast that I've been to over the course of a couple of years. And, you know, so even just for this episode, you know, trying to pull out a few of my favorite beaches, yeah. even that was difficult, let alone trying to pick like a single favorite on the entire coast. I don't know that I could do that. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe <laughs> okay. that's probably an unfair ask. So, somewhere in my memory bank, I could have swore, well, maybe I wasn't even that confident, but I, I might have uh, misremembered that you were gunning for one singular favorite, which of course would be controversial as all get out. Uh, and get yeah. Oregonians uh, all riled up. <laughs> Maybe we don't even want to go there. But oh Jamie, you've, you've got 48 to choose from just from the southern Oregon coast. Many of those you hit just on this trip. So let's define that area here as, as we sometimes do here on the show. When you're talking southern coast, set us some boundaries. Obviously, we're going as far south as the California-Oregon border and up to whereabouts. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a, a little bit of a squishy definition when you talk about the North, Central, and South Coast, but sort of the generally agreed upon boundary is Reedsport. Okay. So that is, you're getting pretty much out of the Oregon dunes. You still have some Oregon dunes there south of Reedsport. Um, but pretty much once you're past that town, once you're past the Umpqua River, you're pretty much on what's considered the Southern Coast. Got it. I like that. And 
tons, tons, tons to choose from. I actually just went last summer, summer 2021, on my first trip to kind of what felt like specifically a Southern Oregon coast trip. Had a great time, was blown away by some of the beauty down there. Everything that folks say about it is, in fact, true. Jamie, give me just the overarching characteristic of this trip. If you had like an elevator pitch or 30 seconds at a bar to tell someone what this trip was like, humor me here. You kind of talk about the characteristic of this part of the coastline, right? Um, and how it's different from the other parts of the coastline. So I know, you know, the North Coast, you have a lot of those sort of long, sandy beaches, mm -hmm. Cannon Beach and Astoria. Um, the Central Coast, you end up with sort of a lot of the big, bigger cliffs, a lot of the tide pools, sort of these rockier areas. And the South Coast, you get kind of a mix of the two. It, it's a really interesting mixture of kinds of beaches. So you've got, like I said, some of the big sand dunes you have to cross to get to these sort of little hidden beaches on the other side. You have a lot of the dark sand beaches um, where you maybe will find a bunch of agate deposits. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of these, these rockier coastline too, where, where you might have just a, a really small little beach tucked away into a cove. And then right in the other side of this little headland, you'll find another tiny little beach tucked away into another little cove. And so because of that, you have just more beaches, more separate beaches on the South Coast than you would say on the North Coast. So when I did this project and was just counting beaches, North Coast, there was like 24 beaches that were named mm. that I went to compared to, I mean, that's, you know, half what you find in the South Coast. So there's just a lot more, a lot, a lot more places you can go to on mm -hmm. the South Coast, I think. Mm -hmm. A lot to choose from. And Jamie, that makes it so hard to winnow it down to just a few of your favorites, but we're going to focus on three, top three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where to yeah. begin? In no particular order. Uh, yeah, no particular Just, order. We're not ranking here. We're not picking children. Yeah. Uh, we're saying <laughs> here. Here is three. Yeah. And Jamie, where would you uh, you like to start for the three on our list here? Well, I'm going to kind of just go down in, in order. These are three from this most recent trip I took that stood out to me the most. Okay. And I'll just go kind of in the order that I discovered them on this trip. Um, so the first one being Flores Lake, which is a really cool. I mean, it's not kind of weird that the, the beach is named after a lake, but sure. there's a lake there. I promise. Yeah. This sort of inland lake that's sort of hemmed in, um, by the sand and uh, right against the shoreline. And if you park at the lake and you walk around the edge of it, you can get to this beach. And as you walk South along that beach, it opens up into this really, really fascinating place that I've never quite seen anything like it, at least here in Oregon. Jamie, jog my memory. Is this the place where there's like kite surfing and, 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 and stuff like that going on? I didn't see any of that going on there. I want to say people do do that there. Okay. Um, because you get sort of this big, it's a sizable lake and you can do all that there. Um, so I think the lake itself is its own attraction. Yeah. But, you know, for me, I'm out there looking for beaches, right? You are a man with a plan and the, that plan right. involves beaches. And, beaches. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to like, you know, draw up, which you eventually will for a story that'll come out next month, kind of, uh, some rundowns of these different places. What is like the tip of your cap to Flores Lake uh, of like, this is why you should make a plan to go check this one out above others. I think the thing about Flores Lake is it has so many interesting features. So, I mean, a lot of times you go to a beach, it's a beach. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some driftwood, you know, <laughs> you know yep. maybe there's a small creek. Flores Lake has, um, sort of three uh, features about it that I find really fascinating that you're not going to find in a lot of other places. So the first one is rock formations. There are a bunch of really cool different rock formations sort of carved out of these sandstone bluffs that run alongside the beach. Yeah. And one of them is this big arch that's just sort of oh. right. Um, it's kind of up against the cliffs, but there's enough space where you can kind of get walk through it and take pictures of it. Um, it's a really cool, I think they might just call it arch rock, but there's also a lot of arch rocks on the coast. Sure. So not really helpful to call it that. Uh, but it's a really cool formation that I've never seen anything quite like it on any other beach in hmm. Oregon. And they've got a few other just, you know, interesting pillars and, you know, spires that are just kind of off there on the sand, which is really interesting. Hmm. The second feature that's really cool about it is, is those big cliffs. So you've got these sort of these towering, tall, sheer cliff faces that are just right up against the beach. Um, it's sort of might, what you might see in, I don't know, like in England or Scotland oh, or something okay. like that. You know, um, just these really tall bluffs that are really sort of, you know, straight and tall right above you, which is really cool. 
And those run along sort of the, the as you're walking south along the beach, they they run right against the sand there. Um, and as you're walking south, you can kind of walk south just about a mile or two um, until the point where the beach ends at a, a point called Blacklock Point. And at that point, it goes off into the, the water too much, where unless you have a super low tide, you just can't get around it. But at that point, there is what is, I think, the third really cool feature is this waterfall that's pouring off of those cliffs um, right there into a small creek into the ocean. Um, it's not the biggest and most impressive waterfall in the world, but it is among the biggest, most impressive waterfalls I've seen on a beach on the Oregon coast. It's not every day you see a waterfall on, on a beach, let alone cliffs like that, let alone really cool arch rock formations on a beach. So all of those things combined make Flores Lake, I think, just one of the most interesting beach destinations uh, on the southern coast. Any one of those would be an attraction in and of itself, right? There are spots where you would pull yeah. off the road to go see a different arch rock, I would assume, right? Or a, a waterfall or a creek that spills out into the ocean. And the fact that there's all three there makes it just a, a, a touch above, in my opinion. You got to you, know, you do something different if you're going to set yourself apart in a field of like, I don't know, 48 <laughs> beaches. You got to do something special. So that's right. On to the next one, Jamie, Sisters Rock, uh, another particularly special spot on the Southern Oregon coast. Oh, Sisters Rock was so great. I don't know if you've had this experience, Jim, where you get to a natural place like this and you like you just feel like all of a sudden it feels like a playground. Mm. Um, like my inner child just came out at that Sisters Rock. Where so just, fun. I was in awe of everything. And I just want to go, oh, let me go over there. And oh, let me go up there. And oh, let's check that out. Um, it's a, a really uh, sort of obscure spot where there's um, really just a tiny little pullout on the side of the highway, which is not marked at the pullout anyway, uh -huh. that fits like four or five cars. That's one of those spots where you show up and people are there, you know, drive down the road, come back in an hour and maybe you'll find yeah. a spot. Um, but once you get there, if you have a chance, it's this, um, this sort of like these twin rock formations. Maybe I think it's technically one rock formation that looks like it's a couple. And they're just right there on the, the shoreline. And as you, you kind of walk into the saddle of this rock formation and then go down on either side of it. And there's a beach on either side of these two rocks. Oh, wow. Um, and because only four or five cars can get there, the odds that you're the only person there are pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or the only person on one particular beach or the other. And it was one of these just like places that just felt like paradise. You know, the, the water as it was coming in on this sunny afternoon was like that light turquoise color. Oh, yeah. Um, all of these like cliffs all around. Um, just beautiful, beautiful scenery. It felt like a, a place I want to go back and explore several times over. It was just one of those places. Um, but again, you kind of have to know where it is and how to get there. So it is kind of one of these quote unquote secret spots that I'm sure... Um, some folks are not going to be happy with me mentioning, but you know, I, I, it's just so beautiful. I want everyone to ex be able to experience this beauty and to, you know, share in the joy that I felt there mm -hmm. because it's just such a great feeling. Jamie, I, I think I, I, I identify with that playground feeling and also the feeling of you're on a reporting trip where you're going to see, and correct me if I'm wrong here, dozens of beaches on right. this trip. And we would be remiss to think that you're going to be blown away by every single one. Right. <laughs> but to, to, right. to, I mean, they're all beautiful. They're all great in their yeah. own way, but oh, yeah. not everyone is going to like capture that whole heart, right. Uh, that kind of adventuresome feeling, uh, the way that you feel when you walk into a place that really, really grabs you, if you will. And I really love the feeling of like, wow, this exceeded my expectations. This was better than I thought it was going to be. I saw a picture of this place and this is so much cooler. Or I didn't see a picture of this place. I don't know anything about it. And I went because I saw somewhere that you know somebody else enjoyed it. Exceeding expectations in the outdoors is one of those fleeting feelings that you, you can't predict. You're not going to be able to get it all the time. But when you do, it is like a little slice of magic. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. A little piece of heaven to be, to be there. And it feels like that. I, I felt that, that, in that place for sure, just so special and so grateful that that place existed and that I was able to be there mm -hmm. and to be able to have it more or less to yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Primo. Well, what's not to love. So, uh, from one place that's a little secretive to another that is just outright named Jamie 
secret beach. <laughs> secret beach, as I like to call it, not so secret beach. Um, it is probably among the best known places in the South Coast. And a lot of people, yeah. that's not to say that, you know, everyone knows about it. Um, but I mean, this is the, the spot that is like, you know, uh, I see a lot on like Instagram influencers will mm-hmm. go there or like, you know, uh, trendy travel bloggers will go there. Um, this is a, this is part of the um, Boardman Corridor, so the scenic mm-hmm. corridor that is on the southern stretch of the coast, um, leading from like Gold Beach to Brookings. And there's a lot of great spaces, places to pull out. Um, mostly sort of like these big overlooks. You know, um, you've got like you know natural bridges, which is a cool rock formation people like. Um, Thunder Rock Cove. Um, there's a bunch of beaches too out there. Um, a lot of cool spots. Secret Beach is one of those ones where I've always felt I kind of like went into it with a little bit of cynicism because it's mm. like. Cool. It's named Secret Beach, so everyone is like, "Oh, it's got to be cool." Yeah. Um, if they named it anything else, I wonder would it be so popular? Uh, um, and there's so many other secret beaches that are like way more secret than this place. So I kind of came into that feeling of like, "All right, we'll go to Secret Beach and we'll see what it's about." I showed up and I was put in my place immediately. Really? <laughs> By this place, it was not overhyped at all. It absolutely lived up to the hype. Um, it exceeded my expectations, like you're saying, Jim. It was a beautiful, beautiful spot. And I will say this is a place that's best going going to at low tide. And that's true, honestly, of a lot of these places. Um, Flores Lake is definitely a low tide spot. Um, you know, if you want to see more of a beach going when the tide is out is the best way to do it. Secret Beach is a place where there's places you parts of it you can't get to unless the tide is out. So I made sure to get there at low tide just so mm-hmm. I could explore. And it, it almost felt kind of like the Olympic coast in a way where there's mm-hmm. just all these really fascinating um islands and rocks and things just right offshore the water again that 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 light turquoise color there's a small sea cave that was full of sea stars and anemones and mussels and um, places to explore places to sit in the sun and it's right up there against against some of these tall um, cliffs or a tall headland in this 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 particular place um, with trails that lead up and beyond to some other viewpoints Um, so you can go hiking from there and hike for miles upon miles upon miles mm-hmm. from this point as well. Um, it just blew me away. Wow. I thought, Jim, it was, it was spectacular. I, I love the fact that you're, you're able to admit that you went into the place, like not that <laughs> excited about it. You know, we, we've all kind of been there like, okay, Silver Falls State Park actually is an example of that for me, Jamie, where I was just like, I, I don't really have high expectations for this place, but I need to check it out. And I walked mm-hmm. away like, whoa. Yes. This is the reason <laughs> yeah. why it is so popular. I don't know what about it like made me kind of turn up my nose a little bit in the first place, maybe because it is such a popular place and I'm like, oh, this is a tourist attraction. Mm-hmm. But to to go to a place like Secret Beach and to be like you said put in your place. I just love that. I think that's great. And that is like the best case scenario, right? When when you're hoofing it to this many different places, you've got a plan, you've got a mission, you've got to, you know, crank through these and to be like, whoa, I need to sit and stay a while and enjoy this space and kind of cherish it a little bit. That is uh, exactly what we want. And, and that enthusiasm just rings true in, in the way you describe the place. Yeah. So Jamie, the, the good news is though, you didn't just go beach to beach to beach to beach. Ooh, you can only say that so fast, uh, so many times. <laughs> you didn't just hit beaches while you were on the Southern Oregon coast. You have plenty of other things to maybe promote a little bit, let us in on. But first, we're going to take a short break. If you have student loan debt over $75,000, listen up. Credible.com can help you refinance your student loans and save thousands. Unlike other refi sites that show you teaser rates, Credible lets you compare actual pre-qualified rates from top lenders in minutes. And with their best rate guarantee, if they can't find you a lower rate, they'll give you a $200 gift card. Let Credible help you get out from under high interest rate student loans. Go to Credible.com now. Message from Credible Operations, Inc. Pre-qualified rates are not on offer of credit. Terms apply. Visit Credible.com for details. Don't wait. Refinance your student loans today at Credible.com. All right, folks, we are back talking about Southern Oregon Coast beaches. And while we're there, a few other things to do while you're on the Southern Oregon Coast. Jamie, you've got loads and loads of good things to promote, to let us in on. 
one of which we've actually dedicated a whole episode to here on the show, but it's super worthy of swinging back around and talking about again. Yeah, that'd be Circles in the Sand, yes. Jim, which is, um, for those who did not hear the episode, I highly recommend going back and listening to it. Mm-hmm. Um, just to touch on it in short here, it is uh, an event where uh, this group of volunteers led by this one man, uh, Denny Dyke, who we talked to for the show, um, draws elaborate, beautiful uh, labyrinths in the sand at low tide and invites the public to come walk them. It's a beautiful event. Highly recommend to anyone. It happens in Bandon. Usually runs from like May to August. Um check them out um when you're down there if you're down there in that time period definitely stop by and check out one of the labyrinths because it's just such a cool experience and if you happen to run into denny you gotta strike up a conversation oh this, he's one of those guys who yeah, talk to you this guy I, I i think someone in our one of our you know channels uh you know, chat channels here at work or whatnot referred to him as like a Bob Ross ish kind of figure uh, <laughs> yeah. in terms of his voice, just yeah. a very soothing man, not at all intense, but passionate. Like there's a difference mm-hmm. between those two things, right? Uh, he was just such a fun, fun person to talk to and obviously makes beautiful, beautiful work, beautiful, beautiful art uh, there on the Southern coast, Jamie. Another spot I don't think we've talked about here on the show, Prehistoric Gardens, Jamie, uh, another gem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I did a story a few years ago on the best roadside attractions yes, in Oregon. that's right. And this was like, if if not my number one, close to my number one. Yeah. Um, just such a cool spot. So this is, um, it, it's right there kind of in a, a spot along the southern coast where you have no cell coverage. It's right next to Humbug Mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just right in the side of 101. There's a piece of property in the woods where... This guy back in, I want to say like the seventies or so built a bunch of life-size concrete dinosaur statues Yes, that he's like painted up. Um, and he like, you know, tried to make them, like I said, all life-size. Um, so you can go in there and there's a, a big T-Rex and there's a brontosaurus or, um, I don't know the names of the dinosaurs, sure. but did, like, <laughs> um, find like a six-year-old to help us out yes, with that. Definitely. Um, but it's such a cool place to just stop off and wander. A good place to, to to stretch your legs if you need that, or if you've got kids in the car, or people who are young at heart who want to yes, just see some 100%. really cool stuff. Prehistoric Gardens is definitely a cool place to stop off. Super cool place to stop off, and I I'll say my memory has been jogged, Jamie. We did do a Best Roadside Attractions podcast, if memory serves. Uh, this might have been included on there, but that's going way back in the catalog a little bit. Um, I might be wrong. I might be right. I don't remember for sure, but uh, that sounds, that sounds probable. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we've probably done that. The Peak Northwest catalog is deep at this point. Um, I I could segue out of that by being one thing we have definitely talked about on the show. Uh, anyway, we, I am functionally doing that, but we've definitely talked about the beautiful lighthouses of the Oregon coast. And Jamie, the Mm -hmm. Southern Oregon coast has a host, almost an embarrassment of riches in that regard. Yeah. So many lighthouses uh, on the Southern coast. We were talking about Reedsport down to Brookings. You have the Umpqua uh, lighthouse, Cape Arago, Coquille river, Mm -hmm. Cape Blanco, and then the Pelican uh, lighthouse. The the last one is one you can't like go up to or into. It's a private one, but you can see it from the beach, which is neat. Of those, Cape Blanco is is among my favorite lighthouses on the coast. It's on a really windy headland, um, just actually just north. Uh, I'm sorry, just south of Flores Lake, um, and so it's a really beautiful spot to go um, explore, to see the history of the lighthouse, to get a tour if they're open. Um, really cool spot, and the other ones also are are just great to stop by. Um, not all of them, like I said, are accessible. Cape Arago is also off on a, like a, an island just offshore where you can't get to it, but you can see it from a few different viewpoints. Um, so lots of cool places. If you're a lighthouse fan or interested in seeing some different stuff, places to go and snap some shots or yeah. go explore a little bit. Very cool way to spend your days. And, and the ones that are accessible generally offer a pretty cool and unique experience to be able to go either inside or read the plaques outdoors or, you know, take a little guided tour if they're offered. I am a sucker for that kind of stuff. I am a stop and read the plaque, stop and read the sign kind of person. Oh, yeah. And the lighthouses are a great opportunity for that. And Jamie, any good road trip, which this undoubtedly was, would be 
out of sorts entirely if we didn't talk a little bit about the food along the way. And oh, yeah. particularly a place uh, first up on your list that has one of the best names <laughs> in Oregon. I, I feel confident in saying that right now. Yeah. Barnacle Bistro. <laughs> I love Barnacle Bistro. It's there in Gold Beach, right in downtown Gold Beach. And it is my go-to spot whenever I'm passing through Gold Beach. Um, they always have something good to eat there. Um, so last time I got some wasabi fish tacos, um, a little bit of fried rockfish with um, really generous pieces of fried rockfish with um, some wasabi and some tortillas. It was excellent. Just wonderful. Um, they serve uh, Arch Rock Brewing, the little tiny brewery that's just around the corner there. Um, so it's a good place to go and hang out for a minute, grab a bite to eat. I, I, I always stop by there in Gold Beach every time. Man, it's an every time stop for a travel reporter. It's got to be good if it becomes an every time stop. <laughs> I actually have a couple more of those that are sort of new every stop, every time stops for me. Like okay. I've only been there a couple times, but they're turning into that down there in Brookings. Um, you know, because Brookings is is you know the farthest south coat, the farthest south town on the Oregon coast. So, uh, you know, it takes some driving to get to. But when I'm in town, there's two spots I love to stop at. Um, for lunch, I love going to this place called Tropicalia Brazilian Cuisine. Um, Tropicalia also being one of my favorite genres of music uh, mm -hmm. is maybe part of it, but they have, they do basically smoothies and like Brazilian lunch. So they have some, um, some street foods, some esferas, which are like basically like hand pies filled with meat, some really excellent homemade hot sauce. They do sandwiches. They do a bunch of stuff. The, the, owner and the guy who's cooking uh is brazilian and he knows what he is doing oh yeah it is excellent and just a great casual spot to stop off and grab a quick bite to eat if you're in town or um or in my case in between a bunch of beaches mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not all jamie uh you've got bandon baking company on there for a good treat maybe a little breakfast action Oh man, this is, this is where I, I discovered this one in this, this, um, most recent trip, uh, where usually I go to the Bandon Coffee Company, which I also love, but I want to check out Bandon Baking Company because they had something on their menu that really, uh, piqued my, my curiosity, which is a thing called an egg mitt. Oh, an tell egg me more. Mitt. Yeah, right. Um, it is basically like, uh, a, a grilled bagel filled with egg and cheese. Um, it sounds like a breakfast sandwich, right? Yeah, basically. I mean, you think, you think you know that, but the way they prepare it, and it took like 10 to 15 minutes to prepare. Hmm. Um, the way it's prepared, it, it turns into something different entirely. I don't know if I can really explain it well. Um, but it, it sort of made it a cohesive thing. <laughs> this is like a magical, like, uh, twist on the breakfast sandwich, bagel sandwich. Yes. Yes, exactly. I need like our food writer, Michael Russell here to help, um, give me some adjectives to talk about food. It transformed it. And I was happily, happily surprised. So I think the, my, my new move in Bandon in breakfast is to go to the baking company and get an egg mitt then head down the street to the coffee company and get a cup of coffee and hang out in those picnic tables they have outside and eat both those things there. Wow. That is, I think the move right there. So next time you're in Bandon in the morning, check out an egg mitt, Jim. Egg you will mitt. Not be, Man. You will not be disappointed. I guess I didn't – if you would have asked me to describe what an egg mitt is, I guess I don't even – I don't have a specific idea of what that would be other than I th I'm thinking like oven mitt and <laughs> or, or catcher's mitt, like uh, yeah. a baseball softball mitt. I'm also a proud like Michigander, uh, a, a mitten state person, so we all like to point to – where we grew up on the hand map uh, <laughs> or a mitten. And I have all these mitten associations, but none of them are tied to breakfast in any way. So I guess I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't have known what to expect. And the fact if you that think you think about like a catcher's mitt. Jim, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I think, I think I had a way to explain that. Right, think about a catcher's mitt, but instead of a catcher's mitt, it's a bagel. Okay. And, in, and instead of there being like a baseball inside of that, fill it with like egg and cheese. If you're into meat, some sausage mm -hmm. or bacon or whatever, um, fill it with all those things and then like cook that, yeah. that whole thing. And so it's just cheesy and melty and soft and delicious. Wow. That sounds good. And yeah. I'm glad that my rambling about different mitts has ended up 
productive. <laughs> I hope that's useful when you start writing your story about all these wonderful places. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. The softball mitt. There we go. There it is. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to segue right out of that to uh, a Thai place that is of particular interest as well on the Southern Oregon coast. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, this is another spot in Brookings. I mentioned there are a couple of spots in Brookings, um, the Brazilian spot, and in this place called Kun Thai, which is um, – it's in a, a building that I originally knew as a, a, a brewing company there in Brookings, but now it is a Thai restaurant um, and it is fabulous. It's just fabulous. Is this um, the spot right off the main drag? Yes. Yeah. It's right there next to a Fred Meyer. Um, and it's a place that our colleague um, Jayathi yes. recommended to me. Yes. She's a big fan of it, having lived in Brookings for a little bit. And it is right on um, a good spot. I like to go and um, hang out there and get, you know, I, an eel thing. Um, you know, they've got all kinds of Thai dishes, get a Thai iced tea, and it's just wonderful. Absolutely worth a stop. Yeah. Jayathi, a uh, friend of the pod, another reporter here at the Oregonian and Oregon Live. She led uh, our colleague Dave Killen and I on a Peak Northwest video shoot down to Brookings in 2021. And uh, we stopped at Kun Thai, and it was supreme we took our takeout uh out to our campsite for the night had a grand time uh it was uh nothing short of excellent so uh, i can heartily endorse kuntai and with that hearty endorsement jamie i think it's safe to wrap things up but i uh would be remiss not to pause and just say anything else anything else folks should know we've covered a lot of ground but there's always more you know, I would just say, um, you know, head out there and check out the beaches for yourself. You know, we're going to have this package put together sometime in May. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? The weather is really nice right now. The beaches are great. Um, you know, I, a lot of people kind of get when they get to go to beaches, they kind of get into the same spots they always yep. go to, which I understand. Uh, but there's something really nice and magical about exploring places that you've not been to before that you don't know necessarily getting out of your comfort zone a little bit. And that helps spread crowds out, too. And so some of these places... Um, you know, while they may be, you know, quote unquote, secret spots, some people are just great new places to discover um, for yourself. So go out there, find some new places and enjoy yourself because you know what? A day at the beach, it's nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at indeed. Well, folks, until next time here on the show, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram at Peak Northwest and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details, of course, at OregonLive.com slash pod support. This episode of the show is produced by me, Jim Ryan, alongside Jamie Hale and Andrew Thien. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen. I worked hard to get my degree, but I was working even harder to pay off my student loans. Then I found Credible.com. Credible made it fast and easy to compare pre-qualified refinancing rates from top lenders so it would be faster and easier to pay off my student loans. I'm saving hundreds of dollars monthly, and checking rates on Credible was free. If you want to lower your student loan payments, get help from Credible.com. Message from Credible Operations, Inc., read by an actor. Pre-qualified rates are not an offer of credit. Terms apply. Visit Credible.com for details. Don't wait. Refinance your student loans today at Credible.com. Credible.com.